Hey guys, guys. Welcome, welcome back, back to, to our channel. channel. And today we will be doing part two, well, episode two of our home improvement series. So let's get into it. So today we are showing you how to make a DIY floating headboard for yeah. under $40. So we have a king size bed in our room. We just bought the platform in the base. So it was just like a mattress on top of that. And um, we just wanted to switch stuff up, hence our home improvement series. But we wanted to do it in an affordable way. So why not do a DIY headboard? Um, and we're just gonna let you guys know throughout the video the things that you'll need and what you need to use. So stay tuned for that part. So first thing we're gonna do is measure our bed frame. Yeah, you wanna make sure you have everything centered. I've seen some people do headboards where they'll add like scones or lights to the sides of it. So you just have to make sure the measurements are what you want it to be for how you wanna hang it. So let's get into the next step. So after you get your measurements from your bed frame, you wanna take those on over to Lowe's or Home Depot. The measurements that we got were 80 inches by 24. Now when we got to the store, we didn't see anything specifically of that measurement. So we had to kind of either round up or round down. If you round down, your headboard will meet in the middle of your bed, like right towards the edge. If you round up, it'll be over the sides. If you're interested in adding scones or lighting to your headboards, I would say to round up about five or so inches. Anyways, um, we didn't get our wood pre-cut. We actually end up looking around and finding something to where we can just round up to that um, area. And then, well, round up to the measurement. So we end up getting an edge glued board by the company ECMD, or that's the brand. Um, it's a stained finish. It's not stained, but it's getting wrapped. So that part doesn't matter. Um, it comes sanded and everything. So we really don't have to do that, but we will be doing that anyways off camera. We just want to show you the main part so you know how to do it. So after you get your board, the next step is to get your cloth or fabric. Um, I ended up heading over to Walmart and looking at the cloth. I'll insert a video up here to show you guys. Um, we have a gray comforter set. We just like gray. That's the color we kind of agreed upon. Um, I was pulled over to that white fuzzy color, but I was just like, no, because white will get dirty. And especially if you're just, you know, doing the whole floating headboard thing, you just want something neutral or rustic, depending on how your like style is. So we picked this gray. It's not too furry, but it's a soft plush material. It has kind of like zigzags. And honestly, we're we have like a whole bunch of pillows so that's going to kind of cover it anyways but it is going to be like a nice piece um but we're showing you right now um how everything looked in walmart and how i got it measured based off of your headboard measurements that you went to home depot or Lowe's to get you are going to have to convert those inches to yards because that's how you're going to figure out how much cloth you needed so um i had my first measurements was 80 by 24 so you know that ended up being equal up to like two and a half yards you want to go a half up just so you can wrap the cloth around the headboard you don't want to do just to the measurements because then the cloth is just going to be on the front and you have like the wood exposed so we ended up doing um the yards a half more and um that's what we did the next thing that you'll need is a mattress topper and you can choose if you want to add batting to it, the cloth or fabric batting, or if you want to stuff your headboard with um, cotton or whatever they have in that section. But I think the mattress topper is the easiest, most affordable route to cover the whole headboard and just get it over with. Uh, we ended up cutting one out of our old mattresses and just putting it on top. You can get one from Walmart for about like 20 or $15. I would recommend the twin size mattress topper um, because that really covers the whole thing. You might even have a little bit extra, but you can just cut that off. So that's all you need. Okay, so let's get into how we are going to do this. We are going to take the foam mattress topper and put it on top of our board. Then after that, we are going to make sure it's lined up with the actual board, cutting off all and any access on the ends. Most likely your foam mattress topper won't be split in half, but ours was, so we're just showing you guys like how we did it. Um, if you have a regular mattress foam topper, you'll just place it on top of the board and cut off all access so you wouldn't have to do it this way. But if you do take the approach that we did, this is how you would do it. And we just cut along the middle to just make it even. And that's all you need to do for this particular area of the video. Most likely your foam mattress topper will not be split in two. But if you took the same approach that we did and cut it out of your own mattress, um, this is the steps that you'll take. We end up putting the leftovers in the middle to make it even. And now we're just wrapping it with duct tape. The next thing that we're doing is wrapping the duct tape gently around the wooden board and the foam mattress topper, leaving no dent so it'll be all even. 
If you have a full mattress topper that's not split in half, you can use wood glue. Um, we did not, so we used the duct tape. But if you're using the duct tape, you have to make sure that the duct tape is placed gently on the end so it's not leaving any dents or any um, impressions. Because when you go to wrap the fabric around it, it will not be even. Whether your foam mattress is cut in half or not, if you are using duct tape, you want to tape this on the board vertically and horizontally to make sure that the foam is secure and that once you put the fabric on nothing will start to move or maneuver so once you're done taping your headboard this is how it should look um, when you're doing it horizontally and vertically the next thing we're going to do is the fabric so once you put the fabric over the headboard you should spread it out evenly and make sure that it's even on both sides um, because when you go to cover it, you want to make sure that everything is together. Um, right now, we're about to lift it up and start to staple it. Um, when you're stapling your headboard, the fabric to the headboard, you want to make sure that you're pulling the cloth as tight and as close to you as possible. You want to make sure there is no gaps and no like loose ends when you are stapling this headboard. You also want to staple as close to the outer edge as possible because when you go to cut the access fabric from the back side of the board, um, it'll just be easier um, and it won't be necessarily pretty. This is how the headboard looks at the front. Um, now we're gonna show you how it looks at the back. Now you wanna make sure that you are folding the corners so that it has an even look and not just all over the place. Like I said, stapling closest to the outer edge as possible is gonna get you a neater outcome when you're done with the headboard. After stapling the sides, you're gonna work on the top and the bottom. Um, and when you get done with that, you're gonna end up cutting off the access fabric towards the back. Um, once you cut off the access fabric, you are going to staple every other inch around the frame because it is going to make sure that your whole headboard is secure. So the back of the headboard will not be pretty, but that's fine because it won't be exposed, only the front part. This is what it looks like. You wanna make sure that the fabric is secure. You can do that by pulling it, and if it feels loose, you are going to staple that area. You will see that in the upcoming clip. Um, we just wanted to show you what it looked like. You will obviously dust everything off, but this is my fiance pulling the fabric and stapling where it seems loose. You're gonna have to do this a couple of times, but the outcome will be worth it. So voila, this is our headboard. It looks beautiful. Now let's get into the hardware so we can finish off this project. So depending on what kind of wall you have, that's what you're gonna determine what kind of hardware you're gonna use. We have sawtooth fasteners and keyhole fasteners. We use the sawtooth ones. That was best for the type of wall that we have. You can do it based off of whatever wall you have. Um, so we're just putting the hardware on there and then that's how it ends up looking. So this is the final review. This is how everything turned out. We're so excited. It came out beautiful. We love the texture. We love how it looks. It's going to be perfect above our bed. Um, this is how it ends up looking and this is us hanging the headboard. Um, we were trying to level it out. Usually you can use different kind of tools to do that. Um, we just did it in our own way, so don't mind us. Um, we're beginners. Um, so we're taking a tape measure and trying to level it out that way. Um, and we end up hitting it right on the nail. So that's one way you can do it. If you do it a different way, then use your way. Um, but right now we're just focused on getting that headboard on the wall. Um, so that's what you'll be seeing in this next clip. So the final reveal happens in three, two, one. <laughs>